Hello guys, my name is Mamu Tribe and you're welcome to mdosart.com and I'll be showing you how I went ahead and created this female portrait. It's going to be a 42 minute video and it took me about 3 hours to complete so it's going to be moving at about 4 times its speed. So I hope you guys sit back and enjoy and I'll be explaining some tips and how I went ahead and did the painting. So I first began by creating with my uh, sketch pad just a rough color palette. The color palette is going to contain the colors that I just look and use the color picker to select. So usually I select colors from parts of the face of the character, you know, and at this point I'm not really concerned about accuracy and proportion. I'm trying to just use my eyes to just measure out the stuff, the proportions of the character that I'm painting. And uh, I can I sample colors from every part, you know, some colors from the parts of the neck, some colors from the side of the face. So I do that so that I can have a variation of colors that I select from. Now at this point, I'm not expecting anything. I definitely would not expect the image to look exactly precisely the same. You're just training your eyes so that your eyes can be able to gauge and to be able to judge the proportions. And by proportion, I'm just trying to specify the specific location, like the distance between the eyes, you know, distance between the eye and the eyebrow, distance between the nose and the lower lip, distance between the forehead and the chin. Just using your eyes and trying to get this. Now, I haven't perfected this and each time I start out the painting, I just try and use my eye to gauge the distances and sometimes it helps and I get it on first try but I usually have to keep editing and editing and editing. Now I started to rough out the eyes and the eyes are really important because mostly if you don't get the eyes then you don't get the character at all. That means you've gotten another character not the character that you are actually trying to get so the eyes have to be okay the nose and the lips once you can have these three and then you have to have a liking you start to have the image look like the character now for the brushes i use i use the hard edge brush and the default soft edge brush because i don't know when i started out digital painting early last year i just had the notion of always having to create a custom brush for everything I just found out well I, everything just boils down to hard and soft edges so I tune down the slider and I can have a semi soft and hard edge so that also helps so right now I started blocking in the shapes of the nose just looking at the light rendering and at this point it really helps if you can squint your eyes because when you squint your eyes, it allows you to be able to actually focus on the image and less on the details of the character or the painting you're trying to do. It, it, it definitely doesn't require you to have always a portrait. It can be any kind of other artwork. And sometimes when you squint your eyes, you can see the variation between light tones. So this time around, I'm trying to notice that the light is coming from the top left or top right and it's casting a shadow underneath the nose and the chin some shadows underneath the hairline and beneath the neck you know these are parts that shadows are going to fall and they're really important and also I walk on separate parts of the image so right now I'm walking on the hair um, the scarf I'm walking on the scarf and just selecting random colors again I'm not trying to like make it really perfect at this point just using the eyes and trying to just draw what I see because you know it kind of helps when you draw what you see not trying to force yourself to think you see something that would be weird again for the layers I have a layer for the image and I have another layer where I actually select pixels and paint on so there's a separate layer and uh, I'm not using the mouse I'm actually using a genius sketch pad it's actually good and it's cheaper than the Wacom but I'm kind of like saving for a Wacom because I've used my friend's Wacom and it's like super excellent you know it's, it's so nice so 
So at this point, I've begun to try and block in the lips and trying to see how I can use values for tooth. And the thing you can try and avoid is just using white because I don't know you can just quickly decide to say, oh, I'm drawing an eye or a tooth, and the first color you decide to select is you know something just very very bright. That doesn't usually help because there's actually a gradation. There's always a shade and a tone. Now the areas underneath the chin also capture light, the cheeks capture light, and sometimes the edges of forehead capture light, like in this image around the left eyebrow, that's where the light is being captured. And so that I reduce the amount of times I go to the color selector to select colors, the color sampler, when I select colors I actually want to paint in different grades of that different gradations you know shades of that same color or other colors at the side of the canvas so that I can reduce the number of times I actually go in and sample colors that also helps save time now on painting the skin skin is actually very tricky to paint because skin is a function of uh, light and the environment if you have a sodium yellow sodium light bulb installed in your room or you go into a mall where there's a fluorescent light bulb and someone takes your picture if you have the picture of yourself in the room and you have a picture of yourself in the mall with the blue with the white sodium light bulb or white bulb you notice that the images appear different and your skin tone will appear different so you want to consider the light source that is falling on the skin also if you're using sunlight if you take a picture without any exposure or flash in sunlight then you also notice that the color of the skin is actually different so one person can have a variation of multiple skin tones but it depends on the ambient light and light that bounces off so you can always use that to enhance the skin tones so for mostly for painting dark skins you kind of notice there are a lot of purples and cool uh, blues yeah, there are a lot of blues and purples and reddish browns and red oranges mostly for black skin so that's what I just noticed for painting black skin so even if I don't really have a reference for the skin I can just use that concept and knowledge and then I study the light that is falling on the character and then I can be able to use that and mix them together so that the flesh tones will actually appear much more appealing now at this point I'm going to block in the facial shape and begin to work on the hair and fabric fabric at the same time because I just noticed for me if I spend a lot of time working on one section then I don't know I just begin to lose the painting so it just gives me that flexibility to work on different sections now I think about values when I want to use values like when I was painting the hair right now instead of just using light versus dark you know I can just mix the tones of the lights and the tones of the darker colors together I can like even the colors that uh, don't even exist on the hair I can decide to use it now I notice that sometimes the on the brush tool because I don't have really have a very powerful system you know I you can decide to increase the brush spacing if you increase the brush spacing it actually goes a long way to help the painting process which is kind of cool. It allows your computer to actually use less memory if the spacing between the brush is a bit apart, like probably about 30 or 40 percent spacing. It comes 25 percent spacing by default, so you can just decide to increase that spacing. That's the gap between the pixel that you're using your paintbrush to paint. And also when I begin a painting I sometimes become very discouraged because I just noticed like dude this this person is not actually looking like the reference image at all you know it's like kinda like not cool and I just get pissed off or become discouraged but I now notice that you know you just have to keep doing it and right now I'm not even using guides or grids I'm definitely definitely going to make adjustments later on because as you can notice there's a difference between the distance between the eyebrows and the hairline 
also the nose is of point you know distance between the bottom of the nose to the top of the lip you know and that's almost accurate but you know there's always a difference so you're not going to get it the first time so it's always cool to always know on your first try if you do get it on your first try that's cool there's nothing wrong with getting it on your first try but for me I usually like to experiment and then I go ahead and fix and fix and fix the fixing never stops even when the painting is done you always have something to fix all right so back to the painting and usually when I begin I like to leave the painting zoomed out the other tools you can use like the navigator if you go to windows and go to navigator you'll be able to use the navigator to view your painting at a distance away it's like you're looking at it from a far distance that also helps you to judge your proportions much more accurately than when you have your image totally zoomed up like the image is in your face like it's up there in your face and that also helps to that is sort of a disadvantage especially when you're just trying your roughs and blocking in so it's a good idea to like zoom out so that you can get the big picture when you're zoomed out but you cannot mostly get the big picture when you're zoomed in but if that's your style and you're used to it, seeing people that just start out their paintings and they like zoom in and start working with the details, that's fine. But almost everyone I know, you know, the habit is just to start with the big shapes first and blocking stuff, you know, rough out, do color rough outs. And once you do that color rough out, you'll be able to have something and say, all right, this is going to work out. Then you can zoom in and start adding the details once you have your proportions accurate. So right now I'm working on the fabric, just trying to see what I can do with the fabric. And also you can step down on your brush strokes to make some changes in case you've made some drastic changes. You can always go to Windows and use the History tool. The History tool records your brush states and it, you can actually step back in history just like I'm doing right now, just stepping back in history. Also some of the brush settings I use, I use the transfer settings and the control is on the pen pressure settings so on the brush settings you can switch on transfer and use pen pressure in case you're using a pressure sensitive stylus so mine is a genius pressure sensitive stylus it's a genius g pen f610 so i got that from the genius website it's actually cheap and it actually gets the job done i kind of like it but i like the other products like the the wacom there's the bamboo it's also cheap you know the Cintiq those ones are the you really have to have a big pocket for that one <laughs> yeah so right now I'm just trying to figure out the eyes and I've created some guides if you click on the ruler tool in Photoshop I'm using Adobe Photoshop CS6 the ruler tool allows you to drag horizontal guides if you click on the top ruler tool and drag it down you'll be able to create guides and you can use guides to gauge your proportions so now you can see that the proportions I actually used by just looking at the image were wrong and they were off but at least it's a good exercise to use your eyes to be able to see how quickly you can be able to judge your paintings and then later on you can begin to correct them now that's one advantage using digital art but for most traditional artists they usually start off by making measurements and measuring the actual proportions and distances so with years of practice you can see artists just pick up a pen tool or pick up a brush or pick up a pencil and they just paint something and it just comes out excellent all that comes with years of practice and i just spent like a year trying to paint and learning some stuff and doing a lot of research online and checking out youtube you know there's some real cool guys out, out there and one of my best youtube mentors like it's the from Zia Tiatra, Tiatra, sorry I didn't pronounce your name well, it's from uh, idrogirls.com and or the artclasses.com, they are both his sites, you can go check it out, he has lots and lots of tutorials there and I saw his work and it was really inspiring. And other sites you can also go to our Pinterest and you, know, you can check out Pinterest or Divine Art and there's a new one, Art Station, Art Station is like totally badass site because you meet a lot of professionals. I work on movies and games in our station. So back to the painting now. It's an honest fact to say that this painting is not going anywhere right now, but 
it's not going to let me give up. I'm not going to give up on this painting and like looking at it and saying like, oh my god, look at that, the nose is off and all that. So that's really bad. Now, what I just did right here, you can use Windows and go to Arrange and create a new window for your painting. So this allows you to have the same, you can work with on the same painting, but have two windows. Now, this is in case you want to begin to zoom in and add more details. So I can have two separate windows right now and I can create more grids and guides and then I can be able to work on both images. So it, is, it also helps rather than having one image and then working on the same layer. So this is not going to destroy artwork. If I close one of the layers right now, or one of the PSD windows that has been created, it's not going to destroy your work. You, you're still working the same way and this is a really cool and very handy feature. So you go to Windows, Arrange and you can create a new window for your painting and then you go back to Windows, Arrange and you click on Float All in Windows. This gives you the option to float both same documents. It's creating an instance of that same document and you can float both of them together. So this time I'm just trying to fix the eyes and you know trying to use my guides and check out where things are supposed to fall you know and usually at this point I just get frustrated and stuff so it helps to take a break because when you take a break and you get back you'll be able to see, notice that oh you know what this this thing is off point now this stuff is like not supposed to be there and all that you know it always helps now while it's it's also cool to sample colors that are actually challenging to pick with the color picker I almost always just go to the color picker and if I look at the reference image I try and just think about a color that might actually you know that might actually be close to it and I just use that it also it also helps it helps a lot if you're able to just look at the color and then pick it but there are times where I just go and pick from the image directly <laughs> and again this image is not really a high resolution image so you can actually always work with high-res images sometimes people give you images to actually work with or just have fun painting and you notice that the images are pixelated so in case you have pixelated images then you know it doesn't really help matters that much because once you zoom in on an image that does not have high quality you begin to lose pixels and the colors you select from a image that has poor quality will not really be accurate because you have less spaces for the pixels to record color so this time around I'm using some oranges on the skin, just adding a little bit of uh, detail here and there and adding some light renderings because the light is more evident on the forehead, on the tip of the nose, the bottom of the chin and the cheeks. So on any time you're trying to do other paintings, just know that if there's a light source that's actually from the top left or top right, you're actually going to have light shown there and there's going to be some highlights also in the eyes. So right now at this point I'm not satisfied with the lips because everything just off with the lips right now and you know the entire painting is not really looking at something you would like to show the client because at this point you don't want to show this to the client because your client will totally zoom off but if they can be with you and notice how you make changes you know you discuss with them some clients are actually cool they can give you advice and say hey, you know what I think this part it's not really working now. Those are cool clients. And some clients just say, oh my god, you're so unskilled. Now, this is terrible work. You don't know what you're doing. And, you know, they can just play around with you like that. But I'm just doing this for fun. So, mostly I paint all my images for fun. You know, some are images of friends. You know, it's some are family images. You know, some are just images of other artists. You decide to say, oh, you know what, I want to do something like this. It's all fine as long as you can get, you can get inspiration. So right now I'm using the lasso tool, you can press L and then draw a selection around the pixel. You can actually select that part and then you can edit it using the transform tool which is Ctrl T. So you press L and you draw a lasso selection around a shape or an object and then you can use the transform tool which is Ctrl T and then you can adjust the edges. So that's a quick way of making transform to large areas rather than always having to repaint. And I actually hardly use the eraser tool because I don't know, it's just my style. So rather than erase part of a painting, I just select 
a color from the image and then I paint over and that will serve as over painting or yeah that's that, that will serve as an over paint so instead of using the eraser tool because sometimes the eraser tool wipes away the pixels and if you have another layer underneath you begin to see the color underneath that layer now that's a cool method you can use to actually shade a character where you have a darker color underneath and you have a lighter color above and then use a soft eraser and reduce the opacity and then erase now that will help you show the layer underneath but since I'm painting on one layer because of my system I don't like have a system lag and memory performance and uh, this painting is a 300 dpi resolution so I don't really remember the width and the height but I usually, pray at, I usually paint at 300 dpi resolution which is a fairly good detail resolution for print because you won't actually lose the quality at 200 or 300 dpi so right now I'm beginning to work on the fabric and working on different parts of the face you know adding colors here and there selecting colors from the character and imagining some colors that don't even exist because sometimes you can experiment and add colors that you don't even expect to be there on skin and then when you sample skin you just notice wow these these colors are actually there you might be shocked to find cyan or some blues on images that you never expect to find now these combination of colors they actually help the image they boost your image when you have multiple colors in there but when you have just one specific color the image is muddy like this beginning to get a bit muddy because i'm just using one value so a mixture of other values is going to make the image like come to life and you can actually enjoy using it enjoy the painting so still zoomed out i'm trying to like fix the nose because at this point i just realized the nose is not really as accurate as i want it to be you know it's just looking different and i'm zooming out more and just studying the image just to see how it's going to come out now sometimes it also helps i also create pixel grids just to gauge the proportions more and make corrections so you can notice that the i have the pixel grid from the image and then i transfer that to my painting so that i can use that and uh, this is going to be like looking like a weird mathematical stuff where you have a lot of grids and pixels there so just don't get discouraged it's just a way to help you when you're starting out and eventually when you become really good you don't really need all these grids and guides most of the time but you also need them so they're just important but as a measuring tool you can always use this now a lot of artists out there discourage you to use guides mostly and it's not bad i understand why because when you always become tool dependent you won't actually really become good at your craft so you work for the tool not the tool working for you so but also at the same time i've seen traditional artists who measure with the pencil they actually gauge the character and measure with the pencil then they make marks on the paper i mean if they can make such guides then this is digital painting so using the guides isn't really such a bad idea but overuse ain't really cool sometimes so it's going to be an argument of using guides versus not using guides well you work for what's best for you and if someone wants he can sue you yeah sure go ahead and sue me i use guides <laughs> so right now i'm adding more colors i'm adding more purples and adding more reds to the regions of the skin and oranges so that i can like add more shadow and depth to these sections and I notice the chin I'm just trying to fix the chin and then the regions of the neck I need to add more purples and add more light pinks there you know light browns just mix up these colors because having just one color is not going to be cool or if you want if it's easier for you to create shades using one value go ahead and use one value to create the entire shade for the tone and then you can duplicate that layer and use layer blend modes and add a variation of the same value in different opacities and um, I'll actually be doing that towards the end of the painting just to boost the enhancement of the color of the skin so that helps but you can also do that while you're painting it depends on the method you, you like to use so right now I'm just checking and gauging more and just seeing regions and areas where I need to like cut out and need to add more values to the painting 
and the lips ain't the lips ain't really coming out yet and I'm starting to get a little lightness over here and there now the edges of the mouth would always have a depth and always catch a shadow because along the face whenever there's a smile there are some muscles that warp around the lips and because these muscles warp around the lips that's the reason why you always have these shades around the mouth now remember the mouth itself is a cavity and there's no light entering the mouth when the mouth is closed so when the mouth is slightly opened the light that goes in actually gets trapped so less of it is being reflected and that allows you to see the shadow and whenever you have a surface that's bulging out then underneath that surface you're going to have shadows like for instance the brow area because of the skull you notice underneath the brows usually you have dark shades like the nose because the nose is actually protruding forward and you have a light source that's coming from the top so underneath the nose you will have a shadow same thing for the chin now there's a shade underneath the neck because the head is actually casting a shadow on the neck so yeah these are reasons why you have shadows on some regions of the face and some faces sections actually have just highlights and then for the forehead it's a gradation of the shadows underneath the hair or the light source on the head and because the head curves it's kind of like spherical you'll have a change of gradation of lighter darker to lighter colors as you move along now I'm just opening up the guides again because I'm cross-checking the guides and making sure that these guides are actually doing their work to help me check out the proportion because if I don't get these proportions then I don't get this character and I'm going to like lose the painting you know I don't want to lose the painting I want to get the character at least have a liking of that character the painting looks like the character that's the objective and what I'm trying to achieve so right now I'm like kind of zooming in and just checking out areas where I need to like walk more and add some minor details now the brushes have no texture attached to them and the skin actually has some rough texture although the quality of the source image is not high quality image as I said earlier on but it will help if you could use a textured brush and I'm trying to increase the size of the nose because I noticed the one I've been painting is kind of small so I use the lasso trick where I use the L key and draw a lasso selection around the nose I just grab a little drink so using the lasso selection kind of helps now in case you have multiple layers and you want to make a selection across those layers once you make your selection you use copy merge copy merge will transfer the selection across layers that are below the layer you're selecting from so just in case you want to make changes you have like five layers and you want to make changes to all those five layers instead of going back and repainting each of those layers you can use copy merge to make a selection cut edit and then paste back it's going to pass in the selection across multiple layers so right now i'm adding a little bit of depth with the eyes you're adding more darks just bring that eye up let's paint more details And then again, you can never get tired of selecting colors because you're going to just keep on doing it over and over again. And values. And so on its state, um, I spent total time of three hours doing this. And it spanned across two days. So this was not one day's painting. And it was not straight up painting. I had to go back, come back to it because... Yeah, I'm a busy guy. I got other jobs to do, you know, trying to make a living. But this, this is just a hobby. You know, I don't use the painting to make cash. No, no, that. It's just a hobby. You know, so sometimes your hobby is like, it's a nice hobby. Yeah, it's cool. You know, you tell people, well, I, I like to play games. I like to paint. Well, that's cool. You know, if I'm bored, I play games, paint on my PC. And that's cool. So there's nothing wrong with that, you know. People think, oh, you're just wasting your time just, you know, copying and when you tell people you do digital art they tell you oh digital art you just i don't know you just click one button and the computer does everything well 
sorry guys but yeah once you do digital to the digital painting the computer does not copy anything for you you actually do the painting yourself so yeah sorry that's a spoiler but there are certain tutorials that you see people using filters and they just get an image of someone and they use filters and they use those smart filters the smart objects and they create a pencil like or shader type sketchy kind of drawing and they go back and tell people you know what I painted this or I drew this now that that's not actually cool because you know you use filter effects to have an effect on a photo so you use the photo editing tips to create a sketch like painting now when you tell people that honestly they actually respect you and know wow so you could actually edit an image and your image will actually look like a painting now that's cool it's different from using Photoshop and using filters to edit a painting and telling people that you actually painted the picture now to me I think that's kind of like not cool so digital painting is different and then image editing it's kind of different but sometimes I kind of combine both of them if I paint my image and then I can now use image editing like lighting and contrasts or using the levels or adjustment layers so that I can have a image that's actually bright now that's different and you can actually do all those layer effects on pictures you bring in directly so it depends on how you want to consider the kind of art art and artwork you're doing so right now back to the painting I'm just making some more adjustments and there's a slight liking in there and you know usually I'm not satisfied with the job once it's done I'm like ah you know what I could do better I could do better than this and it's always like that so I might actually come back in a few days and go back and retouch the image I might go up and readjust go back and readjust the image so that I can actually have something I can say now noticing this I also noticed that the width of the face is kind of like larger on mine and that usually happens so it doesn't always apply to 2D artists so I've seen 3D artists that whenever they model a character then the proportions actually come out even if they have that liking there's always something off about the proportion because you know you're not a mirror if I wanted to mirror this image if I didn't want if I wanted to paint this image and make this image perfect then I'll just get a mirror right you just get a mirror and or you get a camera and you take a picture um, adding more warm values to the chicks I'm adding much more oranges around in there I was gonna notice the chin around the image the main picture image is actually more oranges around the forehead and around the cheek side so I'm just adding in those and just keep on editing and I just keep on editing and adding selecting more colors just eyeballing it squinting my eyes and using less details and also checking proportions by adding more guides and now noticing the positions I need and so also I'm working on the scarf and honestly I'm not really concerned about the detail on the scarf because I'm actually going to use a layer um, a blur effect using Gaussian blur I'm going to blow out the areas of the scarf what I'm mostly interested in is the eyes and the nose that's just the section that I actually put my interest on so I'm kind of like trying to clean up the canvas by just selecting the grayed out color and then painting over you can also use the eraser tool but you know sometimes the eraser tool can just scrap off the image color layer and have a layer underneath you begin to see the image of that one so that's why I actually kind of prefer painting over at least I'm just taking time to work on this scarf you know just looking at it eyeballing it and selecting colors that I think are there and I'm like trying to like drawing them out and just using them to find out they're there okay another thing about hair is I've seen when I started out I wanted to like draw each strand of hair now usually you can just make a suggestion or a hint and honestly that's actually a far more better representation for hair you can just use big brush strokes and then you select regions where you have highlights on the hair now if you've used other programs you know I've, s I've researched somewhere that the kind of property for hair the way hair reflects light you know they call it an anisotropic property because it's like a collection of 
hair particles and each particle is actually re reflecting light in a different way so a group of such hairs will actually have highlights that are specular but at a sort of wavy form so that is why the specularity on hair is kind of different because hair is kind of anisotropic so I'm going back to work on the fabric and selecting colors from the color channel and selecting fabric the colors that I'm going to use to work on the fabric and also you can always figure out the proportions by using these guides also so even when you're done and you feel you're okay you can always use the guides just to cross check and to make sure that the character has the proportions that you require to use So and also a word for the eyes, you notice that the eyes actually have a highlight, so you can always capture a highlight for the eyes, because the eyes will always reflect the dominant light source. So for instance, if you have a window, and that window is in a room, and the character is actually looking at that window, if you study the eyes, you'll be able to see the window in the eyes. So if you have two light sources, you'll be able to spot two highlights on the eyes because the eyes have mostly all the time the eyes have moisture you know there are some instances where someone's eyes can be dry maybe they're sick or something you know but the eyes actually have moisture and whenever you have the eyes are fluid you know it has its own refractive index so it always captures the light that is falling onto it so you always have that specular highlight on the eyes and especially when a lady is wearing glossy lipstick you have a lot of specularity there too and the specularity is always from the light source. You're always trying to capture the light source in the room. So right now I'm trying to like dust things up, you know, adding more values, squinting my eyes and now adding more colors, even colors that I don't actually, I don't actually from the image, because remember we are not using a very high quality image that I got from the, to use this, I actually asked a friend and he gave me this copy. So I'm using this copy. So sometimes you can always suggest a color that you know you feel might be there and you can experiment and if it doesn't work out you can always use your undo and actually reset the painting back to its initial state and you can also save multiple copies of the image so right now i'm creating a red layer a layer above the painting and i'm going to select a red value and i'm going to just paint out just go go all out on reds just add more you know make the skin look more rich and very rich and alive you know stuff like that and then I reduce the opacity of that layer so I'm also going to add a greens layer or oranges layer so just doing that you know just add more variety and remember you can always reduce the intensity of the layer or you can reduce the, reduce the intensity of the brush And then I'm going to add some greens in there because since RGB is the color, is the way a computer screen or computer monitor recognizes color, then I'll be using the RGB values to actually adjust that. So once I'm done, I go ahead and reduce the opacities of the reds, the greens, and the oranges. And then I create a levels adjustment layer so I can play around with the lighting on the model, on the painting, you know, it also helps when you can do that. And I go ahead and save a copy so that I, when I make drastic mistakes, I can always go back and like work on that. So right now I'm trying to see that making the lips actually wide or reducing it or leaving it, you know, trying to be usually undecisive, that's what happens. So just making, using the transform tools, I made a copy using Control J of my layer and using transform tools and then I'm going to make several copies of that layer and then I'm going to use the layer blend modes using either vivid light or overlay anyone that works for you will be fine but whenever I have that I tone it down so that it can boost the vibrance of the colors on that layer you can also use the vibrance adjustment layer and you know work on stuff you want to work on which is also cool now that layer I created a layer mask it's the 
square grid with the black arrow and then with that layer mask I selected the filter blur and I also selected a filter to sharpen the image now once I have the blur layer on that filter I can reduce it and I can now go back into the mask not on the layer but the mask and I'll paint on the mask of that layer that will help to actually bring out those edges I want highlighted initially I said I wanted the eyes the nose and the lips to like pop out now I'll create a layer over that layer and I use the gradient tool just to add more variety to that layer and again I go into the mask and then I paint over the mask now painting over the mask with black or white will actually allow you to use or show the intensity of that value and then I go ahead and use another adjustment layer just to pump and boost the colors that I have on that channel and at this point do I'm not really happy with the way it came out you know but I can just go ahead and like call this done I know definitely I'm gonna have time later on and come back and I did this so guys if you actually like this sp uh, painting that has been sped up it's not a speed painting it actually took me days two days to do this but I actually sped it up and it's like three hours so you can go to mdosart.com you can see other artworks I've done you can like them or you can make comments all right guys thank you very much thanks for watching I'll see you in the next tutorial bye bye